Aliza's, I'm the sun and Aliza's the moon, it was beautiful for me because, you know what? During the day we have guidance and during the night we have guidance. So why do I feel I'm not guided, right? And I felt like that was a beautiful lesson for us in terms of that you always will be guided, you know, regardless of the day or the night. And that was perfect. That I, and this was the perfection that I was looking for. And when I kept looking more and more into it, it, it just everything came together as one piece. And I knew, you know, there was no other choice that, was, that would make more sense to me, you know. I understand that the Sunnis, you know, reverence, respect um, their companions, as they should, because that is their foundation of their religion, right? And we Shias, we, we revere and reflect and respect um, our Ahl al-Bayt, because they are our foundations of our, of our religion, right? And I just had to choose what was more perfect, you know? Um, it, it's almost given to me as, as you know, you, you choose a little small shack or you choose a palace, you know? And both of which is free, and both you can dwell in it forever. And I felt like, well, you know, if you're going to give me that, I'm going to choose the most perfect place, right? And I'm going to choose the palace, right? Um, and, it's, and just the knowledge that flowed from me, the minute I started reading the hadith from, from Imam Ali alayhi salam, it was just impeccable. And I was starting to explain things I was never able to before. I was starting to, uh, you, know, like, you know, really understand different struggles in my life that I never understood before. I was being able to explain things to my friends that, you know, that I didn't think it was coming from me. Um, you know, I, I didn't have this kind of insight. And, you know, it was difficult at times, you know, explaining things to my parents was difficult. You know, I had a, I had a difficult time. Um, but I understood because, you know, this is their religion that they grew up in. And, you know, having one of your kids become a, you know, change their faith is, is big, you know. I totally understand that. Now, alhamdulillah, we're like best of friends. You know, we need to go over that phase where that struggle is of understanding. And then once they realize, you know what, you have become a better person. And then they realize, wow, you know what? No, we will, you know, get back that relationship that we had. And we will reestablish that. I remember... um, so vividly, actually, my first, you know, Shah Ramadan, you know, fasting, I used to make little trays of dates and dried fruits in little Ziploc containers and put them under my bed. So when it was uh, Saturday time, I used to wake up, eat them quickly, and put them back underneath the bed, and then pray and then go to sleep, right? I didn't have the privilege of waking up and, you know, making food, you know, in the kitchen, because my parents already knew about the practices. They knew what Ramadan was. They knew what fasting was. They knew when, when people woke up. So I would had to do it in that way so that I didn't further upset them because I know they were struggling to cope with it. All right? But that was the challenge. And was it difficult? Yes. But it, there was so much beauty in it. Because then you start to appreciate what really what fasting is. Right? And, you know, as a day's... Pro- as a, a day prolonged, you know, it became harder, right? Because you were waiting for that day to break your fast. And I remember coming home and I had to break my fast and there would be uh, meat, you know, cooked and rice. And I'm like, wow, I had to break my fast with rice. So I'd boil an egg and just to be an egg and rice, right? I had to live with that and I didn't have a choice. You know, I, I couldn't turn back. I knew I couldn't turn back. But that put a lot of strength in me knowing that, you know what, if you can do this, you can do so much more. And there's so much strength in being a Muslim uh, from within. Because if, if I wasn't a Muslim and if I wasn't fasting, could I have done that? No, it's impossible. It's impossible. And only embracing Islam and being Muslim, I was able to do that. And there's, a, there's a sense of energy and sense of light within you and, and, and it just captivates you. And, and you want to do these things. Um, and that's when, you know, challenges seem nothing. You know, I was in, wanting to see more challenges. Yeah, in terms of uh, spreading Islam, quote-unquote, um, I think um, the way we deliver the message is as important as the message. I think I'm one example of a person that when the message was sent, given to me, I didn't accept it. 
but the way that it was delivered through a very uh, proper moral conduct, immediately I wanted, to, I wanted it, you know, give it to me now, a type of mentality. And that's what we need to focus on as, as a community, is that find ways to, pr uh, to provide the message in a subtle, but in a way that you just melt the hearts. And I think as a bait, they would melt the hearts of everyone around them. You know, just the way that they were charitable, not charity, but the way that they were charitable. Um, I remember one story about them that when one of their followers came to the door, they would open the door just slightly and give the charity so that the person that's asking doesn't feel ashamed for asking. And that, that's profound. That, that will melt anyone, uh, regardless of what faith they belong to. And I think that's what we need to instill in ourselves, is find a way to deliver this message in such a way that people are in awe, not of us, but about the Ahl al-Bayt, and that, that we learned this from them, and in awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He has created such, a, such a beautiful beings to walk this earth. You know, their light, you know, their, you know how, how they embraced everything in this world. And I had a taste of that, actually, you know, um, when I when I embraced Islam, being belonging to the Ahmadi community of Pickering, you know they were uh, very helpful, very loving, um, and to took care of me and everything. You know they would drive me to the to the mosque whenever someone would come there to speak. Um, they would drive me back home. Uh, they would always make sure everything was okay and uh, talk to me. You know, provide me their opinions and ask for my opinion about things uh, just for them to understand better. You know, growing up here, and invite me to different events, and really honor me as a guest, and and that was key because um, I didn't know Urdu because it was a Pakistani, you know, community. Um, you know, I picked up words <laughs> over time, um, but I didn't know Urdu. But th that difference of language didn't separate them. In fact, it was an opportunity for them to share the differences um, of culture. And you know, come together as a community, and and that was beautiful, um, because sometimes we let our cultures, you know, dif you know, differ us from other people when it should actually f make us want to get to know each other more. And they got to know me a lot in terms of my culture and and you know, Sri Lankan food and Pakistani food, and and it was great. And I appreciate that so much, and I pray for them till today because that support was my backbone. You know, when I felt beaten um, inside, you know, dealing with, you know, the struggles with my parents, when I felt defeated in terms of trying to convey the message to my parents, you know, they caught me, you know, they, you know, they, um, they talked to me, they comforted me, and that was, that was big, you know, that you can't ask for anything more than that from a, from a community, and I appreciate it so much, even till today, and, and we need to outreached to all converts and, and reverts to make sure that they feel that way and they don't have these struggles or they don't feel like they're hopeless or they feel defeated being Muslim and that they can't you know progress in that way I think we have a lot of responsibility like that and if we were able to do that I think the families or friends of those Muslims who uh, who became Muslims from other religions will start to see it's like wow you have so much love and support. You know, let me find out about this. And, and we can grow like that as a community. And, you know, that's what's important. And, and we've got that here in Toronto. We have a very strong, vibrant community in Toronto. And um, if we can share that with the rest of the world, I think we would be, you know, front runners of, of how we need to be in terms of coming for the Imam Zaman, inshallah. There's definitely racism and discrimination, of course, um, in, in this um, community, or any community, in fact. Um, but I think that should be an, an incentive for us to um, have them, invite them over and have them, you know, listen to what we talk about and have dialogue. I think as much as our community is suffering from different things of... of of the world, for example, like our situations and struggles with our teenagers, music, um, you know, vulgarity in the, in the public. Other communities are also facing that. I think if we can come together as one community, 
and, and talk about these issues and see how we have solved them, um, I think it will help lessen the friction between us. Because as a Christian, you know, you, you kind of are on guard when it comes to a Muslim and just how it's portrayed. As a Muslim, you know, you're also on guard in terms of how you're going to be viewed, you know, from a Christian or, you know, from a, a Jewish person or from a Hindu person. But we have so much to learn from each other. Um, you know, we have adapted ourselves um, to different struggles and different situations. The Catholic community had so many struggles in terms of how they were targeted in America, you know, as, you know, in terms of their priests, you know. Uh, even the Jewish community has been targeted, you know, for decades. Um, we are today in this time, we are targeted in terms of the media. We have a lot to learn from each other. If we can express our love and kindness and share our struggles uh, with each other, that's a great way of an opportunity to really understand them and for them to understand us. And the minute they start understanding us from up down meaning from Allah to the Halal Bait downwards it is just beautiful and, and then they would want to learn more right I think we try to do too much to have them understand us like my name is Muhammad or or my name is Ali or you know and I think we need to have people understand no where do we belong to and who and why are we this way and and who is our teachers right and that way will enlighten you know the others to to come and learn from more from us there's one hadith that um, I look up to and I remind myself. It is so simple, but I think that simplicity creates abundance of knowledge. And this is a hadith that's beautiful because it's shared by all Muslims. And it is, it is so beautiful. It's, it's a hadith that relates to um, the one who knows himself, knows his Lord. And even though it's shared by all Muslims, I think it's shared by all of humanity because every single human being wants to know himself better. And the reason for it, whether they know it or not, is in fact knowing a, a divine being. And that's their ultimate goal, whether they establish that within themselves or not. But that is the reason for every human being, to know themselves better. And right now in this world, it's you know there's so much like yoga and and classes on, you know, um, cal being calm and tranquility and, and peace and, you know, eating organic to feel better about yourself. All of that is to know yourself better. And why? You know, they don't explain the why in the West, but there's a second reason to it. Why? It's because to know your Lord. Because your, your God wants you to be tranquil with yourself and have that peace within yourself and having that state of calmness run through you. Because then you will become this better person. And I live by that hadith in terms of always use that as an example. If you know yourself and what you're doing, then you'll know your Lord. So keep doing what you need to to get to know the inner crux of yourself and understand your own fitra. Because then you'll understand the, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how He has created the entire universe. And once you're in awe of that, all these little things that distract you will become meaningless.